Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Global Atheist News Roundup, dateline 29th of April 2023. This week's headlines. The Taliban kill the IS leader who was behind the Kabul airport bombing. Iran protests a secret committee punished celebrities over dissent. A woman was arrested for claiming prophethood in Pakistan. Pope Francis gives women the historic right to vote at a meeting. Paris synagogue bomber is convicted after 43 years. Kenyan cult deaths, 47 bodies found in investigation into starvation cult. Ex-Governor General Peter Hollingworth is fit for ministry despite his misconduct, Anglican Church Board finds. Philadelphia Archdiocese is accused of transferring a known abuser to a Catholic college. Most adults in the US and in 16 other nations say belief in God and morality are not always linked. In Texas, Republicans push bills aimed at enhancing faith's role in school. The Coronation Cross will include crucifixion relics. The Islamic State group Mastermind, thought to have planned the devastating 2021 bombing at Kabul airport, has been killed by Afghanistan's ruling Taliban, US officials say. The bombing killed 170 civilians and 13 US soldiers as people were trying to flee the country when the Taliban took control. The IS figure was killed weeks ago, but it took some time to confirm his death. His name has not been released. US officials said they had determined through intelligence gathering and monitoring of the region that the leader had died, although they did not provide further details on how they had learned that he was responsible for the bombing. Iran formed a secret committee last year to punish celebrities who backed the current anti-government protests. In a letter dated the 22nd of September, just six days after the unrest began, the committee sent the economy ministry a list of 141 well-known figures. It told the ministry to investigate their tax returns and to take unspecified action against them. The list included football legend Ali Dai and top actress Tarane Ali Dusti. They are among dozens of artists, sports people and social media influencers who have faced economic sanctions, travel bans or detention over the past seven months after supporting the protesters' calls for basic freedoms. Authorities apprehended a woman identified as Sana Ullah from her home in the eastern city of Faisalabad. Senior police officer Nazir Ali Rizvi said the arrest was made shortly after an angry mob gathered and demanded that she should be lynched after hearing the news of her alleged prophethood. See this video. <laughs> The P 
Pope will, for the first time, allow women to vote at an influential global meeting of bishops in October, a move that has been welcomed as a historic first. The new rules announced on Wednesday will give five religious sisters voting rights at the Synod, which is the papal advisory body. In the past, women were only allowed to attend the, gather the gathering as observers. Men will still cast the majority of the votes at the influential gathering, and nevertheless, the reforms are seen as a significant shift for the Roman Catholic Church, which has been male-dominated for centuries. More than 42 years after the deadly bombing of a Paris synagogue, a court has convicted a Lebanese-Canadian university professor of carrying out the attack. The judges decided that Hassan Diab, 69, was the then young man who planted the motorcycle bomb in the Rue Kobernik on 3rd of October 1980. Four people were killed and 38 others wounded in the bombing. Diab called his situation Kafkaesque, Canadian media reported. He refused to attend the trial, but the judges gave him a life sentence. Prosecutors had argued it was beyond possible doubt that he was behind the bombing. His supporters have condemned the trial as manifestly unfair. The Rue Kobernik attack was the first to target Jews in France since World War II and became a template for many other similar attacks linked to militants in the Middle East in the years that followed. Kenyan police have exhumed 47 bodies near the coastal town of Malindi as they investigate a preacher said to have told followers to starve to death. The bodies of children were among the dead. Police said exhumations are ongoing. The shallow graves are in the Shakahola forest where 15 members of the Good News International Church were rescued last week. Only four of them survived. Church leader Paul Mackenzie Nhenge is in custody pending a court appearance. An Anglican church investigation in Australia has found former Governor-General Peter Hollingworth committed misconduct by knowingly allowing paedophiles to remain in the church when he was, was Brisbane's Archbishop, but he is fit for ministry if he apologises to two victim survivors. Victim survivors of Anglican child sex abuse has campaigned for the church to strip Hollingworth of his holy orders, also known as defrocking. The Professional Standards Board of the Anglican Church found Dr Hollingworth committed misconduct in a number of instances and dismissed three other allegations. Dr Hollingworth has accepted the findings and said, I made mistakes and I cannot undo them. The Professional Standards Board of the Anglican Church has been considering whether Dr Hollingworth, who remains a bishop, should be defrocked over his handling of abuse cases when he was Archbishop in the 1990s. It found that Dr Hollingworth committed misconduct by allowing two priests he knew had sexually abused children to remain in the church. However, it found he should be allowed to retain his holy orders. In 2013, then Catholic priest and would-be artist Kevin Barry McGoldrick was transferred from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia to the Diocese of Nashville, where he became chaplain of Aquinas College. In the lawsuit filed on Thursday, Tuesday, April the 18th in Philadelphia, it alleged that Archbishop, Archdiocese officials transferred the priest 
and issued a letter of support on his behalf, knowing that he had a history of sexual abuse. The lawsuit accuses the Archdiocese of enabling the priest's abuse in 2017 of the lawsuit's 27-year-old plaintiff identified as Jane Doe. To know he should never have been at Aquinas College and that he was put there and I was put in harm's way knowingly was perhaps the most trans traumatic, Jane Doe told Religion News Service. The five-count lawsuit entered in the Court of Common Pleas in Philadelphia County names both McGoldrick and the Archdiocese and asks for hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages. Jane Doe's lawyers write in the complaint that the Archdiocese's callous indifference to the safety and well-being of young women in their care was a function of their paramount desire to protect the church even at the expense of innocent young persons. Is a belief in God a prerequisite for being a moral person? Most Americans say it is not, and majorities of adults in other countries would advanced econ with advanced economies agree. Pew Research Center released the findings that also hold true among the most of those affiliated with a religion from its Global Attitudes Survey on Thursday, April the 20th. Even among people who are religiously affiliated, most do not think it is necessary to believe in God to have good values, states the new report on questions asked in the spring of 2022. In most countries surveyed, half or more of people who say they belong to a religion also say it's not necessary to believe in God to be moral. In the US, 56% of the religiously affiliated said morality and good values do not have to be linked with a belief in God. Globally, countries with the highest percentages of religiously affiliated people agreeing with that statement included Sweden, 86%, and Australia, 75%. Texas' Republican-dominated legislature is working its way through a slate of bills aimed at increasing religion's presence in the state's public schools, drawing criticism from Democrats, clergy and activists who say the proposals violate the separation of church and state and are emblematic of Christian nationalism. The controversy revolves around three bills. One mandates the display of the Ten Commandments in public schools. Another allows school districts to require local campuses to set aside time for staff and students to pray and read religious texts. And a third allows administrators to furnish schools with chaplains in addition to existing councillors. The State Senate passed the first two bills last Thursday and the proposal involving chaplains is expected to come up for a vote this week. Lawmakers have yet to vote on companion bills in that Texas House of Representatives. Fragments said to be from the cross on which Jesus was crucified will be included in a newly made Cross of Wales used at the head of the coronation procession in Westminster Abbey next week. The relics of what is known as the True Cross were given to King Charles by Pope Francis as a coronation gift. The cross uses Welsh materials such as slate, reclaimed wood and silver from the royal mint in Clantricent. King Charles hammered the hallmark onto the silver used in the cross. The announcement about the new cross is a reminder that Alongside the pomp and pageantry, the coronation on the 6th of May will be a religious ceremony. This week's Freethought Hour guest is Professor Brian J. Ford, who is a remarkable freelance scientist, writer and TV presenter. 
And don't forget to watch Views on the News, our panel show about this very news. This has been Global Atheist News. The GAN team will be back next week. Thank you for watching.